last week on Legally Kidnapped. Good evening. Our top story this week. You better watch out because the FBI issues a toy warning this holiday season against video girl Barbie, fearing that pedophiles could use the device to take inappropriate videos of children. But apparently the nanny cam hidden in the teddy bear is still okay. Child abuse advocates are up in arms over the TSA's method of comforting children during invasive pat-downs, saying that telling them it's a game leaves them vulnerable to abuse because that's a common method employed by child sex predators. In California, the Supreme Court rules against two parents who are wrongfully accused of child abuse, saying that Los Angeles County does not have to develop a procedure to get them off a statewide database. In Connecticut, Governor-elect Dan Malloy appoints a Supreme Court justice to lead DCF after Susan Hamilton steps down in January. In Oklahoma, thanks to a legislative change, parental drug abuse is not enough to steal a child from a parent, and unborn children are no longer covered under child protection laws. The state of Nebraska urges patients as the Foster Care Review Board blasts the state for slacking on their reform efforts. In Rhode Island, the system sucks is scared over the state's decision to close three shelters for children as they undergo pro-parent reforms. And in Florida, the child welfare agency that lost its contract to provide foster care services in Orange County stops protesting over the loss in exchange for a three-month extension on its contract. The United States and Russia come to an agreement over adoption rules after an adopted orphan was booted out of his forever home and returned alone on a plane last April. The United Nations Anti-Corruption Commission finds irregularities in Guatemala and adoptions. And in New Zealand, an inquiry is being made into false accusations against parents at the Starship Child Protection Center. The number of children stolen into the foster care system of Australia rose to an all-time high. DOCS is being accused of covering up information relating to a baby's death. And a senior Tasmanian bureaucrat thinks that workers should be given more support and respect. In England this week, a review is ordered into 7,000 child protection cases in Kent after an Ofsted report reveals that Kent County Council is ineffective. A Londonary man denies threatening to kill a social worker who is screwing with his family. A family law expert from the London School of Economics says that some sex offenders should be allowed to adopt foster children and that each case should be judged individually on its merits. A coroner refuses to hold an inquest into the baby P case. And a Children in Need census report reels that out of 40,000 children under control of the child protective industry, only 4 out of 10 are on the register for abuse or neglect. In Canada this week, the British Columbia's Children's Watchdog slams government's lack of efforts to fix their child welfare system as previously ordered in 2006. The Saskatchewan government and First Nations are continuing their long-running jurisdictional dispute over who's responsible for the First Nations foster children. And a group of protesters in Ontario keeps pushing to get the ombudsman into place as an overseer of the Children's Aid Society. In entertainment news this week, the National Enquirer is reporting that Sarah Palin's 16-year-old daughter Willow may be pregnant. Singer Rod Stewart is regretting his decision to give up his daughter before adoption back in the 60s. Tabloid reports claiming that Britney Spears was beaten by her new boyfriend are completely untrue, according to a rep for the singer. And teen mom star Amber Portward gets her kid back, but still needs to smarten up. And Kate Gosling gets angry phone calls from other parents after her kids tell other kids at school that there is no Santa Claus and that their parents have been lying to them. A child advocacy group files a lawsuit against Governor Deval Patrick and the DCF commissioner claiming that the Massachusetts foster care system is a wrenching cycle of neglect, abuse, and mismanagement for many children. In this week's Foster Crimes Report, the sentencing of a former California baby stealer and extortionist was delayed until December 15th because the judge doesn't feel good. A former DHS supervisor from Arkansas is accused of raping a subordinate and coercing a foster child into sex. An 18-year-old foster child from Virginia gets 25 years for raping his foster mother. A former foster parent from Tennessee gets busted for child molestation. A foster parent from Utah gets six years in jail and 25 years probation for child porn. And a Los Angeles County child abuse investigator gets arrested for sexual assault after taking full advantage of a real mother's willingness to do anything to keep her kids. The trial of a foster mother from Saskatchewan, Canada, and the drowning death of a 22-month-old is put on hold until January. A foster mother from Oklahoma is going to stay on trial for beating two-year-old Naomi White Crow to death. And a former foster parent of the year 
Xavier from Canada is found unconscious on the floor and was rushed to the emergency room just before his trial was begun on sex charges involving four boys. In North Carolina, a pair of foster parents are heartbroken after losing their real son, taking in a foster kid who they wanted to adopt, but she left them because it was a little creepy. In Florida, adopted children are losing their forever homes because the adoptive parents can't handle the mental illnesses that they caught from the foster care system. In New York, a family court judge is told that he can never serve again for violating due process and failure to protect the rights of litigants. In Wyoming, police are looking for a phony social worker who has been visiting families. And finally tonight, an Illinois DCF investigator is charged with sending threatening messages to a cop over Facebook. For these stories and all the latest dirt on the child protective industry, visit www.legallykidnapped.com. And until next week, this is Baby LK, over and out.